everybody, I'm Beth Davis, and welcome to Teachable Tuesday, where every week we discover God's heart and are changed by His Word. And for the next six weeks, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. And we're camping out in Psalm 23. That's where we're going to discover God's heart and be changed by His Word. So grab a Bible. Every week we'll read and pray together, and then we'll zoom in on one verse. For the next six weeks, six verses. Let's do it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord, send us your Spirit afresh. We know you're not far off, Jesus, that you're, you're with us. You're right here with us. Closer than our very breath. Lord, we want to know you in that way. We want to go deeper with you. We want to glimpse and experience more of your heart and your leadership in our lives. So Jesus, uh, we entrust this time to you, this series to you. We ask for your blessing, your protection, your healing and anointing. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A few months ago, I was uh, visiting Ireland, one of my favorite places in the world to be, and I made a new friend there who <laughs> blessed me more than I can possibly say. On the last full day that I was in Ireland, I had big plans. I wanted to see people and go places. The only problem was uh, I didn't have a car and I didn't know how to drive on the other side of the road and I didn't know how to make all of these things happen. And this new and dear friend uh, offered to be my guide for the day. And she made things happen like you wouldn't believe. She had a car. Uh, she knew her way around the country, the city where we were going. She had connections at all of the places that we went. She invited other people to meet up with us at different stops along our way. And at one point we were in the heart of Dublin, um, leaving one place and, and she said, oh, there's a, a mass happening just up the street at 5.30, let's walk there. And we made our way through these crowded city streets and walked in just in time to go to mass. She was a true local. And so I had this incredible uh, full experience because of all of her wisdom, because of all of her connections, her generosity. I had a great day. I had a beautiful experience because of my guide. Now I've also had the opposite experience. I remember being in Rome once all alone and utterly lost, disconnected from my friend I had been traveling with, no cell service, no Wi-Fi, and feeling very afraid and confused. Now, if you take these two international travel experiences and hold them up right next to each other, which one would you choose? Well, I think we'd almost all choose to have a guide. To have a friend, someone with the connections, with uh, the insight, who knows the lay of the land, right? And I, I think these two examples can actually tell us a lot about life. It's probably been your experience too that when you're in a new situation, right? You're starting a new job or navigating a new season, maybe going to a new school or starting a new semester. It's always a great gift 
to have someone show you around, show you the ropes, uh, a connection there, right? A person who knows where the coffee is, who um, knows how the campus is laid out, knows something about that teacher or about your boss or your coworkers, somebody who's gone before you in motherhood, maybe just even a season ahead who can help you to navigate those early stages with young littles. It's such a gift to have a guide. And friends, in the Christian life, we call this dynamic discipleship. To walk with Jesus, our good shepherd who can show us the way. And isn't it a better way to have a guide? To have someone uh, with all of the connections and all of the know-how showing us how to live this life on earth. Now, Christian discipleship, it's it's more than just being a follower, right? To be a disciple is really to be a student of Jesus, to watch him, to study him, to learn how to, to walk and talk and live like him. But the best part is it's even deeper than that student-teacher relationship. What Jesus is offering us, what discipleship offers us, is that we would learn from the master, that we would walk with the shepherd, and not only to learn from him, not only to become like him, but to be in relationship with him. So for the next six weeks, we're gonna talk about what the life of a disciple is like, what your life and my life could look like if we learned to walk more in step with Jesus our good shepherd. And to do that, we're going to walk through Psalm 23, just one verse at a time. We're really going to take our times and and soak in the word of God, soak in Psalm 23. And I want to begin today with Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And yes, that's it. (laughs) That's what we're going to talk about today. That's what we're going to break open. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In fact, we're really just going to focus on the first half of that verse. The Lord is my shepherd. Because the second part, uh, the effect, right, of that cause, if the Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. The second part really is what the whole rest of the psalm answers why we don't have to worry, what God's provision and protection looks like. What I want to talk about is the Lord Jesus as a shepherd, the Lord Jesus as the shepherd of my life and of your life. You know, sheep are some of the most talked about animals in the the, in the Bible. In fact, the most talked about animal, mentioned over 500 times. And I feel like you and I, we don't have the um, appreciation for a sheep and its shepherd's relationship like we would to like a modern audience in the time of Jesus, right? We need to learn what it means to be a sheep and to have a shepherd. Well, that relationship is intimate and it's important. And I want to I wanna break open both of those things in the life of the shepherd and the sheep and and compare that to our relationship with Jesus as our good shepherd. So for a sheep, the shepherd is important. In fact, this relationship with the shepherd is the most important relationship. The sheep's life absolutely depends upon the shepherd. It's life and death for the sheep. It can't provide for itself, it can't protect itself, So the shepherd is responsible for the life of the sheep, for food, for protection, for its health. The sheep needs the shepherd. It literally cannot live without the shepherd. And that relationship, because of the dependency, the desperation that the sheep has for the shepherd, for its very livelihood, it's an intimate relationship. Did you know that sheep are actually very good at recognizing faces and even more so voices? Sheep respond to the voice of their actual shepherd. I, I, 
I know it's kind of a challenge to come down out of this spiritual way of thinking about sheep and shepherd, but I want you to understand the actual flesh and blood relationship between a sheep and its shepherd. It's so important. It's life or death for the sheep, and it's intimate because that sheep is bonded, attached to the shepherd. The, the little sheep experiences the care of the shepherd, um, the healing touch of the shepherd, the hand in the food of the shepherd, right? It's intimate and it's important. And those same two descriptions, those same two aspects can be said of our own relationship with Jesus, our good shepherd, that this relationship is intimate. This relationship is important. Jesus equates himself with the good shepherd. You know, in Psalm 23, it doesn't explicitly say the Messiah is the good shepherd. It says the Lord is my shepherd. And yet when Jesus comes, he reveals himself in John 10 as the good shepherd. And there's a word, I, I know we've honed in on just the first half of Psalm 23, but I wanna, I wanna zoom in even tighter on this one word, my. The Lord is my shepherd. He's not just a shepherd. He's not only the good shepherd. He's my shepherd. That one word, my, captures this important aspect of the relationship. It, it encompasses the intimacy of that relationship that, that God desires for us to experience in our relationship with Jesus, the good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. In John 10, verse 27, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. So it's not even a, a one-sided relationship. It's not like we're just followers of Jesus. We're just trying to keep up with Jesus. No, this relationship, this intimate and important relationship, matters to Jesus too. It matters to the good shepherd. And he says, My sheep hear my voice. That's you and me. My sheep hear my voice. That means it's possible to hear his voice. That means you can hear God's voice. I know them and they follow me. It's, it's not a, a blind servitude, right? Um, I know them, Jesus says. His, you can hear his heart in that verse, John 10, 27. I know them and they follow me. Because it's intimate, because it's important, we respond to the voice of the shepherd. Now, what does that look like in your life and in mine? Well, let's take those, those same two descriptors, right? Intimate and important and, and talk about that. How do we show that this relationship with the shepherd, my shepherd, is important? Well, uh, <laughs> to keep it simple, time. That's how we can make this relationship important. We can prioritize our relationship with Jesus. And I don't mean just making a mental ascent. I mean with your actual calendar, with your actual time during the day, with uh, if you want to give Jesus more real estate in your heart and in your life, if you want to give him more custody of your heart and your life, spend time with him and you'll begin to know who he is. And you'll want to trust him because you experience that goodness, that tenderness, that care. Think about Luke 15, where Jesus talks about the good shepherd leaving the 99 to go after the one, and you're the one. That's how important you are to Jesus. That's how important your relationship is with him, that he would leave the 99 to come after you. So give him in response to that pursuit in response to the way he honors you with his love, uh, with his time, uh, by God sending his own son, give it back to him. Respond by giving him your time. Every single day, give him your time. Spend time with him in prayer. When I say spend time in relationship, I'm equating that with prayer. Prayer is relationship, daily relationship with Jesus. And there's no way to know where you're going, to know the way, to know what to do, what to say, if you're not in relationship with Jesus, who is the way, if you're not listening to the voice of the Good Shepherd. So if you want to hear the voice of the Good Shepherd, if you wanna know him and follow him, spend time with him. And friends, it is that intimate, it is that real, it's 
personal. You can know God's voice. You can hear God's voice. You will respond to God's voice. And I want to suggest to you today that you spend time in God's word. If you want to hear God's voice, read his word. If you want to hear God's voice, read his word. If you want to know how his presence feels, what his heart is like, go to him in the Blessed Sacrament. Sit there this week. Make a visit to Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. Sit before his true presence in the Eucharist. Allow the Holy Spirit to fill you with his love and his presence. That might feel like peace. That might feel like warmth. That might feel like um, loving, peaceful thoughts. That might feel like power and, and energy, courage, right? That's the presence of God. I want you to get into his presence and experience his heart. And as you experience his heart, you're going to learn his voice. As you read his voice in his pre it, read his words in his presence, you're going to hear his voice. So this week, I want to invite you to come back into relationship with Jesus, the good shepherd, to come back into step with your good shepherd, to follow him along the way. And maybe you're thinking, ah, I, don't, I don't know what that looks like. I've only ever just kind of kept Jesus at a distance. I've been more of a follower. I've been in the back of the crowd, right? Not one of the 12, not walking in intimate, important relationship with Jesus. And maybe right now your heart is even desiring that, that there could be more. You're beginning to, to think and feel there could be more to this relationship. Even if you've been following Jesus for many years, even now, the Lord is saying, there's more. Would you come closer? <laughs> you don't have to, to plow, to work, to walk alone. You can come on this level path. It's a narrow path, but it's a level path and walk with Jesus. He's inviting you today to, to give him authority in your life. So if you want to declare Jesus, maybe for the first time, maybe for the thousandth time, you want to declare Jesus, the good shepherd, as my shepherd, your shepherd. You want this relationship with God to be intimate and important. Pray with me right now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you that you're here, that you're real, that you're alive, and that you love us. We receive your love. We receive your love. Thank you, Jesus, for helping us to receive your love. Jesus, we want to know you as the good shepherd. Say, Jesus, I want you to be my shepherd. So, Jesus, right now, I declare you as the Lord of my life. Jesus, I ask you to be my shepherd, to give me the grace to follow you. Jesus, would you come and be the Lord of my life? Thank you, Jesus, that you can't help but respond to this prayer the same way that we hear your voice and respond, God, you hear our voices and you respond. You hear us cry out to you and you come running. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We pray these things in the mighty name, precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, friends. What a joy to pray with you. Hey, if you just prayed that prayer, I'm so proud of you. And I want to tell you how much God loves you, um, how overjoyed all of heaven is right now uh, to be walking in step with you, how overjoyed Jesus is uh, to be your good shepherd. You're not alone. <laughs> you are never alone. You will never be alone. I'll see you next week. God bless you. Bye.